Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the topic of our last episode, how to get clients to show up for appointments or sales calls. If you are unable to join us and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. And if you'd like to receive notifications on when our podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. Now let's learn a little bit about our guest today. Pamela Wilson is a digital marketing consultant, executive coach, keynote speaker, and the founder of PamelaWilson.com. She's the author of two popular books on content marketing, Master Content Marketing, and Master Content Strategy. Pamela is the creator and head coach for the Offer Accelerator, where she helps people build high-value offers that generate ten to 20000 in revenue every month. So Pamela, welcome to the show today. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Candy. Well, I'm looking forward to our conversation, but before I get into any of the regular questions on the topic I have for you, I'd love for you to tell me just a little bit more about yourself and how did you even get into digital marketing? Yeah, well, I came in through the traditional marketing door. I've been in business for myself since 1992. Mm. So at the time that we're recording this, I'm actually celebrating 30 years in business for myself. And I started out in traditional marketing. So direct marketing, print marketing, Mm -hmm. advertising uh, in newspapers and magazines and things like that. So I come from that world. And in 2010, I brought my business online. So I've been in the online space and the digital marketing space for 12 years now. And there are so many things to love about it. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of a newer branch of marketing. It's a newer um, it's a newer kind of marketing. I think it's gone through an awkward phase, frankly, between you and me. But it's kind of coming out of that awkward phase, and it's maturing as an industry. And it's a really, really exciting time to be using it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Well, I know often in marketing, and you've talked about, you know, you started kind of in the traditional marketing, now you're in digital marketing. No matter what type of marketing we may be using, it can be frustrating sometimes because we're not seeing the results that we're hoping to see. So what are some of the reasons why the marketing efforts don't really produce the results we're hoping for? I think the biggest thing, honestly, is that people hear about all of these tactics. They hear about all of these marketing ideas And and it's a little bit like, you know, the shiny object syndrome where they go chasing after an idea. They like they hear about a tactic. Oh, you should be doing, you know, you should be doing direct mail postcards back in my day, or you should be doing webinars or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And and people get presented these ideas like they are the solution to everything, right? Mm -hmm. And you spend a lot of effort pursuing these tasks, pursuing these. They're really tactics, they're marketing tactics. And you've never stepped back to create some kind of a strategy that looks at, okay, what is our ultimate goal here? Who are we trying to reach? Where are those people hanging out? And how can we methodically go forward and and reach them where they are? Mm -hmm. And without that kind of strategy work, it's really really throwing spaghetti at the wall. And it can be a huge waste of time and effort. Mm -hmm. Well, and maybe someone doesn't even understand how to come up with that strategy, right? They, like you said, they've heard about these different tactics they can use. So okay, I'm going to post on social media, I'm going to write a blog, I'm going to maybe even still send postcards, you know, so do you want to touch on maybe the difference and help them figure out how they can maybe come up with a strategy so that they're not throwing spaghetti at a wall? Yes, exactly. Well, I, I think the best analogy, do you cook at all? Do you mm-hmm. get in the yes. kitchen and cook at all? Yeah, mm-hmm. you do. Okay. So anyone who cooks, I mean, you know the process, you have a recipe, right? And you go mm-hmm. into your kitchen and oftentimes you decide what 
what to make, you know, you open a cookbook and decide what to make based on what you know you have in your kitchen right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to make this soup. You look at the ingredients. I have all the ingredients. I need to make this soup. So that's what's for dinner, right? Right. So you kind of base it on what you have. And then you go through, if you are doing it the smart way, I think you go through and you kind of organize all the ingredients in one place to make it easier Mm -hmm. to cook it all up, right? And then you cook it up and you see how it goes. Did people like it? Did they not like it? You you get feedback, right? And that is marketing strategy. You're basically going to implement a strategy to reach a group of people based on your current strengths. So if you mm-hmm. have a small business, you may have people on your team who are good at certain things. Sometimes maybe there's somebody who's really good at creating video or there's someone who's a strong writer. So you are going to pull in marketing tactics that use the current strengths of the people that you have on your team or your personal strengths if you're doing the marketing yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put it all together as a strategy, right? You're putting all of these elements together, putting it out into the world, and you're seeing the response. You're checking Mm -hmm. to see, okay, did this reach the people that we wanted to reach? Are we making the sales we wanted to make? So you kind of go into it with an overall goal and a, and a view of the tools you're going to be using to achieve those goals. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Right. So to me, what you're saying is the recipe per se is kind of like the strategy. So would tactics be like the equipment you're using? Like I'm going to use a chopper versus a knife or... You know, yes, like what would you or say the, the tactics are? Exactly. Yes. The tactics are the, the tools and they're also mm-hmm. the ingredients, right? Mm-hmm. They're okay. um, so like you, you know, you mentioned postcards or we talked about webinars or maybe Facebook ads or something like that. Those are like, you know, the potatoes and the onions or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Those are, those are the pieces that you're pulling together to make the overall recipe work. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes sense. Perfect. So obviously there's so many different things we could be doing with digital marketing and, you know, we have a website, we could be posting on social media, uh, but we always hear you need to be posting content, you know, whether it's every day, every week, how often, you know, so really for a business owner who's listening and a lot of us wear all of the hats in the business or many of them, sometimes it's hard, you know, to put out a lot of content. So what would you say is like the minimum that you should be doing? And is there really a maximum, you know, that you should be doing in terms of publishing and what should that content be? Mm, Okay. Oh, such a good question. So um, first of all, I think the most important thing to to think about before you think about frequency is where that content is going to go. Mm -hmm. And you always want to favor platforms that you own and control 100% yourself. Right. So that's going to be things like an email list and things like your website. And the mm-hmm. reason that's important is that, I mean, it's not that social media is not important. It definitely has a place, but something that you post on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, even YouTube, it's seen in this moment in time. And then it tends to kind of go downstream and disappear mm-hmm. a little bit less on YouTube. It's one of the reasons that I use YouTube because YouTube functions more as a search platform. So people, you know, your content can surface and search. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you're looking at something like um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok is big right now, even for business people. But that content, it's like lightning, you know, Mm -hmm. it sort of flashes, it makes an impression, and then it goes away and people don't see it after that. So as much as possible, you want to put your content efforts into something that is longer lasting and that you own completely. Mm-hmm. I have known people who have built a lot of content on a platform where they were then taken off the platform for whatever reason, mm-hmm. their Facebook presence was obliterated. I, you know, you and I have probably been around long enough. I know I've been around long enough that I saw Google plus, do you remember Google right? plus? <laughs> right. So that was like, mm-hmm. everybody was saying, you've got to be on Google plus it don't buy Google. That's going to make you surface and search engines and, people put a lot of effort into developing this content on Google Plus. And where is Google Plus today? It mm-hmm. is nowhere to be found, right? Right. And so as much as possible, you want to put your content on a platform you own like your website. 
And as much as possible, you want to try to draw people to joining an email list Mm -hmm. because that is going to give you a lot more reach than you would get on a social platform. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying don't use them. I'm just saying don't favor the social platforms. Um, they, They give you a lot of I mean, they're called vanity metrics, you know, you get <laughs> likes and follows and they those feel good, you know, they, they, they feel exciting, but it, it, any email subscriber is going to be worth a lot more than a like on, on a Facebook post. Um, mm-hmm. I, I saw data, it's a couple of years old, but I saw this data that for every $1 that you put into email marketing, you get $38 in return. Wow. So that's great. I mean, I know. I mean, I, <laughs> I want to find a stock that gives me that kind of uh, mm-hmm. return on investment. So yeah, I, you know, as much as possible, invest your efforts in something that you own and that has been proven to give you a return. Mm-hmm. Great advice. Um, so now that you're talking, yes, do your website or your email list or things like that too. Going back to like, how often should they be sharing content? I was just going to say- there- I- <laughs> I was like, there was another part to that question. I don't think I, I asked a multi-part. So. Sorry. <laughs> I know that's okay. No problem. No problem. So I gave you a very long answer to the first part. So in terms of frequency, so it, it depends a little bit on what we're talking about. So um, when it comes to email marketing, if you have developed an email list, you want to be emailing them at the very bare minimum every other week. And I think it's better to email once a week. Now, When people initially sign up for your email list, you want to have some kind of email sequence in place that will sort of welcome them to your community or to your business. And those emails will go out with more frequency because that is a moment of peak interest and people Mm -hmm. want to hear from you a lot more at the beginning. So more frequent emails at the beginning. And then I would say a minimum of once a week or bare, bare minimum once every, every other week. Most of us who have email marketing software, we're paying for that once a month. So you need Mm -hmm. to be using it, right? It's expensive. Um, And then when it comes to content on your blog, this is actually something I covered in my book, Master Content Strategy. So I wrote two books. Master Content Marketing is all about how to actually create your content. And then Master Content Strategy is, guess what? All about the strategy for using your content to make your business grow. And Mm -hmm. one of the things that I talk about in that book is the fact that that businesses have like a life cycle and a website has a life cycle. So in the early days of your website, when you're first posting content, you probably want to post about once a week at a minimum because two things, it's going to make you a better content creator to publish with that frequency, but it's also going to tell the search engines what your website is about. Mm -hmm. So posting once a week in that first year or so is really important. And then once you kind of get 50 pieces of content under your belt, then maybe you extend that to posting every other week or like you, you have a podcast, Mm -hmm. maybe at first you do it once a week, maybe afterwards you do one every other week. And maybe you do episodes that are a little bit longer, they're a little bit juicier, maybe you create like a downloadable transcript, you just kind of make the content richer, but maybe Mm -hmm. you're not publishing as frequently. So it's, it's kind of like so many things in marketing, it it depends a little bit on where you are in your business and your goals. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Okay. So now if, you know, someone's listening and saying, okay, like I understand I should be, you know, doing all of these things. I know I should do for my email list and my website, you know, but I still use social media to try to get out there. And, you know, I've heard there are reels and stories and posts and all of the things and, you know, stories supposedly are there for a day and they go away where your posts, maybe at least people can go back and scan later and find things. So Do you find for anyone who is still wanting to use social media to kind of get attention, one is better than the other, or, you know, what do you recommend for somebody who still wants to use those methods um, to get out there because they're inexpensive, right? Yes, they are inexpensive. It's not expensive to post on your blog either though. So Mm -hmm. I, you know, I would always, yeah, I'd always push back. The thing is, you know, um, 
I think the stakes feel low on social media. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of times we want to post there because it's like, well, it's just social media. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. A blog might feel a little bit more permanent, but you know, guess what? That's actually a good thing. <laughs> the right. fact that your blog is a little bit more permanent. So if you think about social media as a place where you practice your writing chops so that you feel more confident to post something on your blog, I, I think mm -hmm. that's that's really smart. But I would say... Look, if you're going to use social media, be smart, find your very best post on Facebook and pin it. So it's at the top mm. of your feed. So pin it and then continue to add to the comments on that post. Try to, you know, make it a post that has some engagement and put it at the top. Same thing with like Twitter allows you to pin a tweet. I don't think you can pin anything on Instagram, but any place that you're you're able to pin your most popular content. I know in a YouTube channel, you have like your channel video that people mm -hmm. see when they first go to your channel. So you, you want to pin or highlight your strongest piece of content on a social platform. Mm -hmm. And then I would just say really focus mm -hmm. on having a single social platform that is your primary social platform. And don't try to be all over because otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy just <laughs> creating all this content that literally flows down a stream and people can't find it later, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, you know, it's fine to use it, keep it in small doses, focus on one, maybe two platforms, but really focus more of your effort on the longer lasting digital marketing um, mm -hmm. platforms, which are your website and email. I, right. I always say digital ink is never dry. Mm. And that's, and you know, that is a direct comparison to my print design background, where when you printed something, that ink was actually on paper. And if you made a mistake, it was there forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, digital ink is never dry. So even though the stakes might feel higher on your website or on um, in an email, it, it's more permanent than something you post on social media. So I would encourage people always to be thinking about that's where I really want to show up because when mm -hmm. people come to my website, I want them to see what my business is about. I want them to see our personality. I want them to really get a feel for who we are and what we do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So if someone is listening and saying, okay, great, I know I can't do it all myself, but yes, I want to, you know, focus on having someone helping me, you know, publish the articles and maybe even help them write them, I'm, you know, depending on their situation, but, and so they need help, right? And so is it better for them to find like one person who can help kind of across a range of things, or is it better to maybe outsource just very small aspects? So somebody who's going to help with their blog creation and posting, and maybe someone else who's going to do, you know, other parts of their company. What do you recommend? I would always recommend, and I'm, this is not going to surprise you based on everything we've talked about, but I would always recommend finding somebody who can help you to create content for your website mm -hmm. um, or content that goes into an email that's sent out to your list. So somebody who understands email and content, and it's not unusual to find that in one person. So somebody who's a decent writer who can write a keyword rich post that shows up in search also usually is pretty good at writing emails. So if you can mm -hmm. find somebody who can do those two things and focus on getting that right, oftentimes that person is really good at like interviewing subject matter experts to extract the information. So they don't need to know about your field. They just need to know how to ask the right questions mm -hmm. and then they can generate a piece of content. If you can create a core piece of content that's really strong, that helps your website to show up in search, you can then extract little pieces of that content and put it on social media, make a reel about it. You can pull it apart and make it into like very bite-sized pieces of content that go on these social platforms. But you need to have that core content first. So I would say mm -hmm. start with a content creator who has those dual skills of writing for a blog, which could then become a podcast, as you know, or a video, and can transfer those writing skills to email. That's that's a pretty common combination. Mm -hmm. 
So if somebody is saying, okay, I, I get it. I should be using my website and I'm going to use my email. I'm going to focus on that more. Well, how do I know if it's really working? You know, what do I need to be looking at to make sure that what I'm doing is worth the effort? Yeah, uh, that is a great question. And you should be paying attention to that. So, I mean, a very basic answer is, are your sales increasing? And as part of your sales process, are you checking in to see how people found you, which mm -hmm. all of us should be doing? No matter how we're selling things, whether it's a, you know, a digital shopping cart where somebody buys or it's leads that are going to a sales team or a sales manager who talks to the prospect and closes the sale, or you're the business owner who's actually doing the selling. As part of that process, you need to be asking, hey, how did you find us? How mm -hmm. did you, or maybe even when they book the appointment, you can say, how did, how did you find me? Um, that's really important because that will tell you, well, you know, my YouTube videos are working because people are saying they found me by my YouTube videos or my blog posts are, are helping because people said they Googled and then they found my, my website. So mm -hmm. you want to just see if what you're creating is actually leading to sales. That's really the first thing to look at. And then beyond that, you know, if you're, depending on what you're using, if you have a podcast, you want to see, are my downloads increasing? Is my reach increasing? If it's a YouTube channel, is my channel growing? Are my views growing? My watch time? And if it's a blog, you want to have Google Analytics. Am I getting some traffic to my website? Are people finding me for the right keywords? Mm -hmm. um, I have, to my great frustration... <laughs> I have a blog that I started out, um, I was teaching people design skills because I have a design background. So I was teaching non-designers how to like pick fonts and pick their color palettes way back in 2010. People still come to my website looking for color palettes. And I haven't mm. wanted to teach people that in, in probably a decade. You know, I've been trying to move away from that. But unfortunately, Google pegged me for that. And so now, <laughs> you know, I have all this traffic that comes in. So that's one of the things you need to watch for is, are people actually finding me for a keyword that makes sense for mm -hmm. what I have to offer right now in my business? Mm -hmm. So how... oh, just to, well, just to finish that, I mean, fortunately, it is so much easier to track results now mm -hmm. than it was at the beginning of my career, where you would basically send print material out into the world and you had no idea what happened to it after that. And mm -hmm. nowadays you can get a fair amount of data and actually see what things are doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So mainly my thing is, I want to make sure that the entrepreneur knows that whatever that they are, you know, focusing on, they want to make sure that there is a return on their time and investment and things too, as well. And so um, I think the question that I wanted to ask actually was related to keywords, like on the website, how do they know what keywords that they should be using that can get them found? Um, and where do they put them in their website, you know, to help them get that SEO? Yeah. That, that could be a whole episode, honestly. We could have a whole episode about SEO and I'm not a complete expert. I have a pretty good post on my website about SEO kind of for beginners. So if you want, I can send you that link and then you could put it in the episode um, information so that people can check that out. But a very, very simple and, and kind of unsung hero, I think when it comes to uh, searching for keywords that people are using to find your information is mm -hmm. literally opening up Google and typing in, like starting to type in, you know, how Google has that autocomplete. Right. And then it gives you a drop down of all these different options. So just going to Google and starting to type in keywords that are related to what you offer and just seeing how they autocomplete in Google, because that is, those are terms that people are searching for. Google puts them mm -hmm. in there because it's trying to guess at what you want. And right. it's guessing with its most popular guesses that people are actually using. So that's a great place to start is to just to use Google and see what people are plugging in. Beyond that, there are lots of other steps. You can use a tool to see how many people are searching for that term, whether or not your site has a chance for ranking for that term. 
how you could make the term, maybe add some words so that it's a more specific term and you have a better chance of ranking for it. There's, it's a whole thing. It's mm -hmm. a whole thing, but I'll send you a link that should help with that. Perfect. So the main thing for someone listening now who may be feeling overwhelmed, like, oh, I know I should be doing all these things is really maybe like pick one thing, whether it's, you know, get something that's going to attract people to your email list first, right? And then start creating some type of content to put out in a newsletter at least twice a month, you know, to those. And then you could start worrying about adding a blog, you know, and just little by little adding to it. So you don't have to feel overwhelmed, but you are doing something to get content out there. That, I think that's a great summary of what we've talked about. I mean, another way to flip that around and think about it is the, the sooner you start publishing blog post content, the sooner you're telling search engines, hey, this is what this business does. Mm -hmm. So if you want to flip that around, another way to think about it is we're going to create blog content. And based on that blog content, we're going to send information to our email list. So mm -hmm. may, maybe we just send the blog post or maybe we send a quick summary. Hey, these are the five most important points that we covered in this blog post. Click here if you wanna read the whole thing. So mm -hmm. that becomes very easy email content that you can send to your list that kind of nurtures them and keeps that connection going with them. And by doing it in that order where you're posting on your blog first, you're really posting on your most important content platform, in my opinion, and, and you're sort of, everything else is, is like downstream from that one content source. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, I know this has been really helpful information. I'm sure listeners are going to be learning a lot just from this. Um, but do you have an offer that you would like to share with the listeners so they can continue to get more information from you? You know, they might want to check out, I have a digital marketing assessment that's on, it's on the page where I talk about my digital marketing consulting and they can go to PamelaWilson.com forward slash consulting. And that will send them to the page where that assessment appears. It's toward the top and it literally takes one minute and it just helps you to kind of analyze, okay, what are we doing what do we need to be focusing on and helps you to sort of prioritize your digital marketing efforts. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And if they want to connect with you any other way besides getting that offer, how can they reach you? Uh, the next best place probably would be my YouTube channel, actually, because um, my website is it has 12 years of content. And by the <laughs> way, you can learn how to put together your color palette. For you as as I, not that I want you to do that, but you totally can. Mm -hmm. But PamelaWilson.com is my website. But if you go to YouTube, you can look up Pamela Wilson Coach and find my YouTube channel, which has lots of really great videos as well. So I'd love to help people over there too. Perfect. Well, thank you, Pamela, for being a guest on my show and sharing your expertise on this topic. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This has been fun. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about. So thanks for giving me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, I know listeners will find what you shared helpful. And so I do also want to thank the listener for tuning in. Uh, if you have any additional questions, make sure that you reach out to Pamela at the link that she shared, or you can reach us also at our website, abmp.com, or send us a message at media at abmp.com and just mentioned the Grow Your Revenue with Smart Digital Marketing Strategy. Uh, you also can, again, just send us a message on any topics you might find helpful as well. So we can share that content with you. And I hope you can join us for our next episode, learning how to effectively and efficiently protect your business. And remember, you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And again, my website, abandp.com. You can find the podcast posted on multiple favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. And would you please share our show with those you know and leave a review on your favorite platform? I'd really appreciate your support. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.